So this grill is about 25 years old. It's a Weber charcoal grill with propane starter. And this is what is left over from last time. You can see the charcoal is in these charcoal baskets and there's a lot of charcoal left from last time uh, because when I use the grill when I'm done grilling I close up the vent here and I close up the vent down here and whatever charcoal is in there I have for next time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the bottom vent. I'm gonna give the charcoal a little shake just to get the ashes out of the way. Down here, right there, we have the jet that comes from the propane. And I can turn the propane on, except that I left it on last time. So now there's no propane in the tank. So I'm going to take this tank off and put a new one on. I'll be right back. All right, so I took off the spent tank of propane, put a new tank of propane on. Now I'm gonna open the valve for the propane, press this little red button here, the igniter. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm always ready with the big lighter in case it doesn't. I'm gonna move the charcoal cages so that the flame is going to ignite charcoal in both baskets. Usually at this point, If I'm grilling fish, I might add some uh, flavor enhancing bits. Otherwise, the charcoal is lighting. I'm just going to leave it like that for approximately five to ten minutes. The charcoal will light up after that. So put the grill on. And then I'll be ready for steaks, burgers, fish, pork, whatever you want. Here we are about ten minutes later. You can see that there are coals ignited on in both cages and so I would say that these coals are ready for me to turn off the valve for the propane and you hear a little ting when it uh, shuts off and if you're the sort of person who likes a clean grill, this is the time to give it a little scrape. I would probably put the lid on these coals with the vent open so the heat and smoke can come out a bit. And I'm going to leave it like that for about five minutes. Just enough time to go inside and get a glass of wine before I come back out and put the burgers on the grill. Five minutes later, we have nice calls with a little bit of red in the bottom and turning white around the edges in various places so it's burger time and I'm using the um, sometimes known as Bubba burgers 
the kind that you grill frozen. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, but it seems to work. We're going to let these babies cook on one side. You could do this with the lid off. My usual SOP is to cook them on one side with the lid on for however long it takes, probably no more than five, six, seven minutes. And then I'll flip them over, cook them on the other side for a few minutes, take the lid off, and then it's time for the cheese. So here at the beach house, the grilling situation is a little bit different than it is at home. We have a similar grill. It's a Weber Performer, but there's no propane starter. This is because no propane is allowed by the HOA in our community at the beach house. So we do it the way a purist does charcoal. Um, here's the grill. This grill was about well, it's 10 years old now because the house is 10 years old and we bought the grill right away. The key here, we don't need the charcoal cages right away, but we will use them later. The key here is this chimney, um, which I'm going to fill with charcoal. use two different kinds of fire starters. These are some sort of paper product with wax or something infused. And the nice thing about these is you can order them on Amazon or wherever you order stuff online and your UPS driver will deliver these to you. These or something like these. This is, in my opinion, a better product. They're cubes of very flammable goo. But I think this varies from state to state. But in most states, uh, you can't get this these things delivered. So you'll have to go to your local hardware store to get these lighter cubes. But watch this, I'm gonna use my handy Bic lighter again. Great balls of fire. We put the chimney on there like so. And this is going to take something like six, seven, eight minutes to ignite the coals in the bottom half of the chimney. That's what you're looking for. You want the coals in the bottom half of the chimney to be glowing red uh, at the end of this process. Like I said, it's gonna take not much more than five minutes, maybe as many as 10 minutes. It depends on the conditions. I think probably the most critical factor here is wind, which here in Brigantine, we usually have at least some wind. And so it's a chimney, right? 
the wind draws the air up from the bottom and that's why this works so well. So I'm going to let this do its thing uh, for about five minutes and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm back about six or seven minutes later. Um, and um, this is what the coals look like at this point. Uh, it's a little more aggressive than it has to be in this case. We don't need to necessarily see flames shooting up from the top, but if you look down through the holes in the side of the chimney, you can see that the coals down there at the bottom are glowing red, and that's what you're looking for. So, while I was uh, waiting for the coals to fire up, I collected my stuff that I'm going to grow and the obligatory glass of wine uh, that uh, goes with grilling. But key safety uh, part of this, if you're gonna use a chimney like this and you're gonna get your coals going in anything, any way like this, you absolutely wanna use a good pair of leather gloves. like these and what you're going to do it's going to be a little tricky here because I don't have three hands but I got to move the chimney a little bit and then I'm going to take my charcoal cages two charcoal cages and distribute them somewhere down there where I can take the charcoal in the chimney and Dump a little bit from the top in one cage, drop a little bit in the other cage, make sure I get some hot coals in each charcoal cage, make sure I get all my charcoal out of the chimney, put the chimney away somewhere safe because it's going really hot, you want to put it somewhere where it's not going to burn anything. Now you got glowing coals in your uh, in your charcoal cages how you spatially arrange those charcoal cages kind of depends on what you're cooking because basically what the charcoal cages among the many benefits of using the charcoal cages one is it allows you to have control more control over areas of your grill being hotter and other areas of your grill being not as hot. So sometimes I'll spread the charcoal cages apart like this so I can grill veggies or something more delicate in the middle and put the meat right above the charcoal. If I'm just grilling uh, one thing, salmon in this case, I'll probably put the cages together like that. And then I'll put my grill in there. Um, now I have the vent open down here. Open. And I have the vent open up here as opposed to closed I'm gonna just leave it like that for maybe five minutes to get the heat uh, distributed with the grill lid closed and the vents open that's gonna allow the temperature inside to get to a cooking temperature before I put my stuff on the grill, which is 
all you need to do after this is put your stuff on the grill and uh, cook it. Here we are about 10 minutes later. I think the salmon is probably done. So let's see. Okay. Looks pretty good. All right, what I want to show you here at the end after we've cooked the salmon is that if you close the vents, the vent on the lid, which is hot, so don't touch it with your fingers, and also close the vent down here, which is the handle shouldn't be hot anyway. Now, no air can get inside the grill and that <clears throat> charcoal fire is going to shut down pretty quickly and the um, importance of that is you are going to have 90% of the charcoal that uh, we just saw at the end of the cooking process is going to be there for you next time you use your grill. So uh, that's an important step at the end, is to shut your vents at the top and bottom, preserve your charcoal for next time.